Chapter 36 Joy in Mind Whenever I find myself ready, willing, and able, I try to increase my time spent in meditation. For myself and all of us, the intensified practice triggers all sorts of inner movement as the process of facing mind as it is not only reveals our normal contortions, but also creates a growing field of stillness. It's not that the ordinary ways of getting stuck just drop and fall away. It couldn't be that easy. But rather, we become less swayed by their ceaseless grasping. Where once we felt our thoughts buzzing like bees in a basket, we later come to see them with detachment from the sensed safety of distance and a more spacious awareness. Distress does not just disappear, but from deeper meditation, we come to look upon it in a new way, with more equipoise and calm, more likely to accept than cut and run. However, distortions are not the only form of mind life observed as we plumb the depths in meditation. Sometimes, and far more pleasingly, we open the gates of joy, as I recently experienced. As I sat there in my room, following the breath without too much mind chatter, I suddenly felt a kind of unbuttoning in my heart region. Immediately, a little stream of joy suffused the body, and I felt a swoon of happiness. I've had many experiences of bliss in meditation before, the kind of thing where you don't even want to breathe, or else you'll lose the delicate feeling, but this was different. It was not exactly the bliss that wipes away all thought, that magic yoga drug for which all meditators long, which are achieved in the jhanas or absorptions from the Buddhist Sanskrit and Pali language. It was not quite so tranced out. In this case, my perception of external events remained intact. My consciousness stayed in the body, in the room where I sat. Because I avoided entering trance, the normal bridge to plain 3D awareness was preserved, although the energy state was not common at all. Through this connection to ordinary mind, I was able to receive an important insight. Apparently, simultaneous with the feeling of upwelling joy from the heart, I realized that the external conditions of my life were totally irrelevant, immaterial, and unrelated to this state. I felt a subtle dissolving of the normal idea that happiness comes from a proper arrangement of one's life. Of course, rearranging our affairs is useful and can certainly help bring relative happiness. We all proceed instinctively on the assumption that getting your life in order is good. But whatever the value of self-fulfilling activities in the physical world, in that moment of meditation, I realized that external conditions have nothing to do with inner joy. One could live in the Chinese gulag, as many Tibetan Buddhists sadly do, yet still experience transcendent bliss. Of course, I'm not justifying oppression. In this second section of Universal Vision, I focused on the basic principles of self-healing and the balance of love-wisdom. Know yourself, then accept yourself. This approach focuses on consciousness and our psychology and has little to do with moving energy or direct work on the chakras. It's much more Western Buddhist than Eastern Hindu. It's plain, dull, and not particularly exciting, but it works. However, this recent meditation event was an energy movement pure and simple, unblocking energy at the level of the heart chakra with subsequent release and ascent of previously trapped forces. You could say it was a form of greater self-opening, which is a far more Hindu interpretation than Buddhist, since good Buddhists are more likely to talk of no self. But it was also an important insight into the true nature of 3D experience. The axis of joy and despair basically depends on consciousness. This insight, for me, was itself a form of healing. But whatever the label, this experience showed me once again the primacy of one's inner state, Self-radiant joy really has not to do with social life, and the continual manipulation of external conditions is not a path to inner joy. Joy is wholly a fragrance of heart-mind being, and if that's what you're looking for, you probably will not experience it for long without meditation practice.